Hey guys, and I'm here with the blooper finally. So uh, yeah, the Chase Bliss blooper is pretty awesome. I'm not going to do too much in this video. I'm going to try to keep it hopefully under a half an hour. Uh, I'm having a struggle to do that with a lot of videos lately, but this thing is so complicated and does so much, and I'm kind of glad I got it. I've been playing with it for a little over, I would say four or five days now um and i just really like it it's 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 great it's exactly what i wanted out of a looper especially one that can do a few tricks like this one can and let's get into what it sounds like all right to get started i have the core wave state here it's going into the blooper and then it's going into the mood the mood is disabled right now we're going to be using that as kind of a second effect in this chain to kind of give you an idea of what i'm going to use it for uh, that could be anything there, but this will work for now. That could be a like the storm and cloud burst or a night sky or even a tape delay. But yeah, so I have my piano patch here on the wave state. And this is one of my favorite ones that I've made so far because it has damper noises in it here. So we're going to use the additive mode. There's a normal mode, an additive mode, and a sampler. I have not really messed with the sampler. Normal mode means that any of the effects that are built into this will not add to the loop when we overdub. Additive mode will go ahead and add the effects into the uh, overdubs, and we'll see what that's like. But yeah. So let, let's get a loop in there. It's pretty easy. Um, I have it cleared out. To clear out loops, it's pretty easy also. You just press down both foot switches, give you a little indication that it's cleared them out. And here. All right. So we have a loop now. And it's in playback, no overdub yet. And we have a stability control, which is one of my favorite features of this. It's kind of like the uh, the generation loss all in one knob here. It does quite a bit. It does wow, flutter, um, some noise and stuff like that. And you can customize that within the software, which is a web editor. I'll get into that in a little later. I'm not going to show you the software, but I'll talk about it. So it can get really bad. Kind of unusable there, but still neat. So I'm just going to keep it right around. Here's just completely clean. All right. So I have customized some of the effects on here. I have the manual here so I can go over some of it because I don't remember everything off the top of my head. There's two banks of effects and two additional banks on those effects. But uh, so I swapped one of the effects, which was smooth speed with step speed in channel A. So we're channel A over here. And to engage the effect, there's a button in the front here. I'll show you a picture up on the screen really quick. It's really hard to take. I don't want to move this because this is in a nice location. But I'll click the button in the front here. Okay, it's enabled. And in the center location, it's half speed. Well, it's actually 0.25 speed, so it's a quarter speed. pretty cool. And to the um, left, we get reverse speed changes. And to the right, we get forward speed changes. And these are stepped, so they're in musically relevant uh, intervals, so you don't have to worry about it. So we'll do like this here. Make sure we're still in tune. Mm, not quite. All right, so yeah, um, let's just really quick, that's just one of the things you can do. Let, let's see how an overdub works really quick and then we'll go back into that. So let's do an overdub and we'll look at the layers. I'm kind of over all over the place here, but here. Let's start an overdub. OK. 
Okay. Now it has undo just like other pedals and you can access it via the foot switches but one of the cool things you can do is you can access the different layers of undo with this knob up here. So if I go to the very first, now you don't have the first part, uh, the second part we added in. Now if I move it to the right, we have what I added in. Okay, so that's really cool. Let's go back to the effect. I'm going to enable it. So you can use it like an effect. In normal mode, the effects come after the chain and they don't affect the overdubs. But one of the really cool things you can do is you can print that effect into the loop by just holding down your record foot switch and it'll do one shot, you'll see. Okay, give it a second. We see the indicator lighting. It's going to blink until it's ready. And now it's ready. So now none of the effects are on, but it's in the loop. So if you wanted to go back, you could use this. No effect. Now the next overdub up has the effect. So then we can keep stacking effects. So now I can turn on the speed again, and it's going to be even slower. It's probably too slow to actually do anything with. Nope, there it goes. Kind of cool, but... And I can keep overdubbing over and over again. So let's look at some of the other effects. Um, so we have the dropper. I'm not too interested about that. We have step trimmer. That one's pretty cool. That lets you trim your loops. Less loop. And now we have... It'll, it'll basically make a little like set point to how you want the loop to continue and then you can trim it up like that. So that, that's a very useful feature. Like there, we got a repeating note. All right, so that's pretty neat. Uh, one of the other ones that I really like, I'm not gonna go over all the effects, I'm just going over the ones I really like. So I like the, um, we'll go to the second bank here. Let's go back to one without the speed change and we'll go to the second bank you can run two effects at the same time as long as they're not too like you can't run the stretcher for instance along with a pitch shifter but yeah so we'll do the scrambler i like that one that's in the middle here five what it'll do in random mode is it'll just jump around and I believe that every time you engage it, it sets the seed for the pseudo random number generator, so it'll just skip differently. So that's really neat. And now we can uh, print that. Let, let's actually go back here. So we have the speed change from that other layer and the jumper. Let's go ahead and print that to a new layer. All right, just waiting there. Okay, now it's on the new layer. All the effects are off. And then I can just keep adding more layers. I believe there's eight layers of undo that you can do with the layers knob. There's 16 total. And when you reach the last layer, which will happen is it'll start um, deleting the lower layers in order. So yeah, so that's that's really neat. And every time that's been happening that we've been doing the overdub, it's been adding worse and worse stability to it. So it gets more of a degraded loop. We can use this as a Furpertronic style loop or two. We'll get into that in a second. So yeah, that's just the basics. And let's clear that out. So to do a Furpertronic style looper, what we got to do here is we got a repeats knob here. Um, so this will only degrade when you have overdub going. So let's set an initial loop length. So let's just dub, uh, go into playback of nothing. I'm going to wait a few seconds, get a length going. All right, got a length going. Now we're in overdub. And what will happen, let's, let's just do this. OK, 
Okay. Now it's in continuous overdub for what I said is the length. We can make each layer worse by really turning up the stability. But we have the repeats all the way to infinite here, which means it won't get any quieter. But I can turn down the repeats. Actually, let's let's listen to like really bad stability. It's kind of fun. It's getting worse and noisier. Let's now bring down the repeats so each new layer fades. Just like a really long delay, like for Protronics. effects to each loop layer. I believe three, yeah, that's the step trimmer, so yeah, as you can hear, it's getting worse and worse, and it's trimming every time into nothing. So yeah, there's just so many cool things you can do with this. So let's clear the loop. Let's turn off the effects. Let's go to a different patch. We're going to go to my really fun, which is here, um... That's my dulcimer patch. All right, that one's really cool. So, uh, yeah, well, let's use that. We're just going to have a little bit of fun with this. Mm, all right. So, uh, how do we want to do this? Let's just do something here. And you can see how we're going to uh, we're going to feed my mood to using the blooper. This is also fun to feed the habit with a loop, but we'll get to that in a different video. So, let's just start here. Overdub with some, uh, some stability there. Right, there we go. And the fun thing we can do is we can go back in time. higher up. We can even change the speed. Oops, that's the tremor. Let's do the speed change. I'm trying to get the right note that I want. Let's just go forward. Okay, that'll be fun. Now, since that's playing back, we can use mood here. We'll use it in the time stretcher here, so we'll get a snippet of five seconds. And then we'll add the reverb in from the mood. Now everything is in stereo because the mood is adding a stereo image.
Yeah, so it's just... It's a great, fun tool to make really beautiful tracks with. Get the idea. Really fun. Cool. So we cleared that out. Yeah, so lots of fun. Um, really easy to use once you get used to it. It's a very complicated pedal, but they figured the interface out pretty well, especially with the buttons on the front of it. Um, let's go over some of the things about it, I guess. Um, the only major negative, I have two major negatives. The first comes from the uh, fact that it uses NAND flash. NAND flash will eventually wear out. And if you're using this in constant overdubs as a Furpertronic looper, I don't know what the longevity of the flash memory is. Uh, I had one of these a few years back. It came damaged. Uh, and it wasn't a fault of Chase Bliss. It was actually a fault of the retailer. They ended up uh, putting it in a... Um, this is back before Chase Bliss went directly to consumer. They shipped it in a... Uh, not even a padded envelope. They just shipped it in an envelope, literally. And yeah, it didn't make it through the mail, obviously. But so I did take one of these apart at that time. That was back when these first came out. I think it was in 2019. I, that sounds about right. And it didn't have, uh, or was it 2020 uh, when I got it? I don't remember. Either way. Uh, so it didn't have any removable NAND flash on it. I believe it was soldered to the board. So, yeah, that's my only major concern. If that wears out, then the pedal basically becomes useless. I mean, if somebody from Chase Bliss can chime in and let me know if that's something that's been uh, accounted for, but... You can't change it. It's not like a micro SD card or something. A lot of loopers uh, have a micro SD card inside of it that can be replaced. Not easily, but it can be replaced. So that's just one of the thoughts. So my main idea behind saying that is if you're going to use this as a Furpertronics looper, what's going to happen is every time it makes a new layer and a new loop, it's, it's using up that NAND. That can probably last for years, but... Yeah, just be aware of that. The other thing is it's a $500 pedal, and it is mono. That's kind of annoying, but in a setup like that I'm using, it, it works out. I am going to add a stereo effect after the fact. Uh, so just some more. It's not really annoyance to me, but it only has 40 seconds of looping time. But that's enough for the stuff I do. The interesting thing comes with how it handles the layers and the overdubs and all that kind of stuff. As you can see, you can use a knob to control those. You can automate the knobs too. So in theory, what you could do is you could have it set on the, when you're during uh, playback, what will happen is the layers will like, you can have it automated. So the layers will go to a different part of the layer. It can add some fun to it. One caveat to that is, is if you start a new overdub on an earlier layer, any layer, uh, after that fact. So if I go back to an old layer and I start an overdub, all the layers forward will be deleted. That's just how it is. And the uh, individual layers can't be isolated. I said earlier there's software. Uh, there's a web editor where you can actually download your samples and uh, just your loop files from it, or even I believe you can even upload them to the pedal. But you can't get individual layers as far as I remember directly from that you can just get the overall loop so that's just one of the things um yeah that said the build quality is fantastic i love the front buttons they actually feel really nice and there's just so much functionality it has midi over uh, trs so that's the thing it doesn't have midi over usb that's unfortunate apparently the usb controller and the MIDI controller for the sound engine can't communicate, so that's a thing. Um, yeah, 
not much more to say. It's it's a fun puddle. For me, it's super useful. I have I have tons of loopers. I have an RC505 Mark II. I have a RC, uh, well, what's the small one? The RC1 um, and things like that. I have just some no-name loopers. I have a DL4 Mark II, which can be used as a looper. And they're all for your traditional looping without the Fripertronic style stability issues or any kind of fading out um, to nothingness like this can do. So this is very unique. The fact that you can print different effects on each of your layers is also super unique. I liken this to like an SP404 or something in a pedal form, but for loops. And that's pretty cool because you can do, you can overdub obviously, and you can also um, like do re-recordings. I forgot what the heck that's called um, in the pedal form. But yeah, you can re-record with effects and stuff like that. So yeah, super useful for my kind of music. Um, fairly intuitive once you know what you're doing with it. The manual, the newer ones ship with this awesome manual here, just like the newer um, Chase Bliss pedals, and it's super useful. Uh, they have videos um, up on the Chase Bliss um, YouTube channel that really show you what to do. But, yeah. Um, also, here's kind of like the different effects. So you have like pitch shifting. The stretcher is really cool. I might bring that out in a different video where it's more relevant. you got to filter, stuff like that. And you can run two of these at once as long as they're not um, like two different pitch effects at the same time. There's just not enough processing power, apparently, to handle that. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to stop uh, rambling on about it. And, yeah, I find Blooper as fantastic as I initially thought it was going to be. And, yeah.